Hey everyone, Jake Schaffron here with Discover Org, and today we're gonna to talk through the buying journey and intent data, and my true life example of buying a sewing machine and what that means and how that relates to when companies buy technology. So with all that said, for the holidays this past year, my fiance had asked me to get her a sewing machine. More than happy to do so. The point though is I don't know a lot about sewing machines. And frankly, on a normal day to day, if you were to audit my personal Google search history, I can assure everyone sewing machines are not gonna pop up. So that said, I was doing a lot of research. So it started here, identify a problem or a solution. This is what your buyer's gonna be doing they're gonna to try to figure out, well, what are they trying to solve? So for me, that is, well, I'm solving getting a gift for my fiance, right in there. From there, what most will start doing is they're gonna start vetting the market. So for me, what that meant was, okay, well, understanding who the different manufacturers are. So there's Singer and Viking and Janome and Brother, all new to me, but it's just understanding who the players are and more off, excuse me, moreover, what the different types of sewing machines are. So computerized versus mechanical. So that's here. And at this point, what I'm doing is I'm reading different reviews. I'm understanding what the benefits of one versus the other are. I'm understanding where they're made and the prices, just getting an overall feel for the market as a whole. Same is true for your buyers. They're gonna go to the companies, or excuse me, the, the review websites, the Gartners and the G2 crowds and whatever else to look at who the key players are and start to differentiate where some are perhaps better or different than others. From there, then what happens? And this is important. Vendor selection, and I would almost say more importantly is elimination. A lot of times, myself included, I am cutting different manufacturers out long before they know I'm shopping. So for me, I was looking at, again, the quality of the overall product, and I knew full well, before I ever went to a brick and mortar store, before I ever went shopping on Amazon, that there were certain ones that I was gonna eliminate flat out. And for you, the idea is that if you can get your message out and drive your brand awareness, you can get ahead of these pre preconceived notions by tapping into this phase of the buyer's journey. Last but not least, is price consideration. I knew what my budget was, and frankly, back here when I was identifying my problem, I knew directionally about what they should cost, but I didn't truly have an understanding of the different, I guess, levels, right? News to everyone, there's sewing machines that go up to $1,500 and then some, that's not what I got, sorry, Kristen. But that said, you know, I was understanding what the budgets were and what the pros and cons for each ones are. The thing to remember, I think the important piece about this piece is that companies like CEB say that 57% of the buyer's journey is actually happening long before they're engaging with vendors, right? The other piece here is if you look at like serious decisions, they're saying that 67% of a decision is being made digitally, not talking to people, but actually doing research on their own time. So the idea then is, to what extent you can tap into this research phase. If I'm a sewing machine manufacturer or a retail brick and mortar store, and I know of all the Jakes in the world who are doing their homework and doing their diligence, and all of a sudden, now I can start messaging to them before they're proactively reaching out, you're so much better positioned to actually drive brand awareness. The important thing to remember here as well, these are much, much different messages. When I'm back here, I don't wanna talk about a product demo I don't wanna talk about coming on site. I don't wanna talk about actually getting my hands dirty. I'm just trying to educate myself, that's it. So if you can send me resources about, hey, here's the components you should be looking for in a sewing machine, or here's the pitfalls perhaps of going a computerized versus mechanical, that's really interesting to me. As it goes along, and as we see increases and decreases, in my quote unquote content consumption, how much time I'm actually spending doing these searches, how much time I spend perusing the web, the messaging should, should be tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, and it should actually be driving me towards here, the sales cycle. So now it's the inquiry. This is when, for me, I'm actually going into stores. I'm now shopping. 
I have my idea of who I want to go with. I have a good sense of what are the pros and cons, what's my price range, what brand do I want to go with. But now I'm going to start trying them out, right? So I'm going to the store, right? That's an inbound lead perhaps. And then there's the actual demo. That's when quite literally in Joanne stores and others, they have a little demo station. They were going through the, showing me the process and the stitching and how it can go through the different layers of denim and whatever else, right? Then comes the evaluation and the proof of concept phase. And this piece is really important. And I'll tell you why, because at this phase, there are stakeholders involved and you might not know who those stakeholders are. So back here, when you're doing your marketing and your messaging, the important thing to remember is that this buying journey isn't done across one individual. Decisions aren't made in a vacuum anymore. Therefore, if you can start kind of planting seeds here and there, and if you can start speaking to different seniority levels and what their pain points you're looking to solve, or if you can speak to, again, the different personas and have, excuse me, and you can have um, different personas and you can understand, well, what are they gonna be looking for once you get to the eval and POC phase? So, case in point, my mother-in-law, incidentally enough, she knows a lot about sewing machines, so while she's not directly involved in my sales cycle per se, at the same time, what she wanted was this machine that she can show her daughter how to use this, right? So there's other factors at play that are gonna come to full fruition in that evaluation and proof of concept phase that you should be marketing to beforehand because they're gonna influence that decision and you have to know who those folks are. From here, then it becomes a negotiation. It's, look, I know what I wanna buy. I know the vendor of choice that I wanna go with. I have a good idea of my price range. Now it's, for me, let me find one that checks all these boxes. For you know, the B2B world or technologies, it might be actually going back and forth until you reach a conclusion. And then lastly, spend the money. And for me, the equivalent at that point wasn't hitting the gong or putting my name on the dashboard or whatever else. It was watching my fiance open up her present and say, oh my gosh, I had no idea that you had been planning this. Meanwhile, this whole planning was happening way back here in around September, actually I think Thanksgiving here. All right, so as a recap then, what is intent data and why does it matter? Well, if we know the majority of a buying buyer's journey is happening long before they engage with you, well, those who are gonna be best poised to win are those who are engaging with your prospects, with your customers, long before a demo comes in or a lead comes in. So, the messaging. Identify problems and solutions. Educational message, high level, top of funnel sort of activity, top of funnel sort of, you know, nurture campaigns, what have you. As you do the market research, start to differentiate your brand. Start to explain, you know, perhaps how you are different or better or whatever. Come here, if you've done effectively, well, the vendor selection, you're now in the cut. Similarly, what you wanna do in this diligence and research phase is speak to multiple buying personas. Gone are the days that a decision made is in a vacuum or by one individual. Really start to understand who the stakeholders are and speak to them. Come here throughout. Now the intent piece is done. Now they're in a sales cycle. Now you can start pushing sales cycles forward, driving urgency, and ultimately pushing for that morning to watch your fiance open up a gift. Or for us in uh, B2B sales and B2C sales for that matter, finally a contract. So that concludes another Whiteboard Wednesday with Discover Org. Don't, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks all.